this tonight, but seating comes on in a possible situation. You have five scores, what do you guys say about the real get out of jail card you gave yeah, that's two in a row. We've had kind of bullpen get out of jail free cards, which has been been outstanding. Uh, that's the positive, and we'll focus on that. Um, Maddie threw the ball great. Fitzy threw the ball outstanding. Um, but but those two guys, you know, they, they saved us tonight um, from a not only a standpoint of of having to use a lot more bullpen arms tonight, but but more importantly, just to give our offense a chance to get going and keep us in the game and. Good things happen when you do that. So I uh, was excited for those guys to, to give us that opportunity and and excited for the offense to get going. You talked about trying to get the offense to get going. Was putting Naaman Lance in the starting lineup a part of that? Um, you know, I think the the past couple days, um, you know, we've shuffled things up a little bit. And, and we've had, obviously, was, we've got some key injuries with, with, uh, with guys being out. But, you know, Eamon's been... You know, probably a guy more deserving of of getting in the lineup more than he has. I haven't, I haven't put him in a starting lineup yet until today, um, and he's been, you know, he's been a trooper as much as he can be. He's a competitive kid and wants to play, and he's expressed that to me a couple times, and and I respect that. Um, and uh, I just figured today was was kind of a good matchup to to give him and. Um, get him in there, and he's passionate about playing. And I said, "Well, okay, big boy, here you go. You know, let's let's see what you got." And he made me look bad, which is good. You know, um, go out there and put that kind of day up. It's like, where's this kid been all year? You know, well, shoot, maybe I should have played him a little bit more earlier on. But you know, he's he earned his stripes today, and and uh, you know, we'll continue to find ways to, to get him in the lineup. With Teeting and Fitzpatrick, was was the plan to kind of extend them a little bit, or was it kind of just like screw it, they're throwing really well, they're gonna stay out there as long as possible? Uh, the latter, you know. I mean, uh, to be honest, I, we were just hoping to probably get a couple innings out of Maddie and and say, okay, you know, we'll go to Maddie and then try to to match it up and and try to get back in this thing, and then you know. Uh, but the ball kept, it was just coming out good. And, and he wasn't losing anything from inning to inning. Um, I could tell the last, last two hitters, it was starting to flatten out a little bit and lose a little bit of late snap, but he was able to battle and get through it. Um, and, you know, to get five out of him, man, I mean, that was, that was a blessing. So uh, w- was really excited about how he threw the ball and um, kept the bats moving, no walks from either he or Fitzy in, in eight innings. It's like, man, that's, that's good. You know, you keep the infield on your toes. You keep everybody rolling, um, and then we turned it over to Fitzy. Same, same plan. We were going to go, kind of one inning matchup with him. We thought, and then um, we were able to put up a couple runs and extend it. It's like, well, let's try to, try to squeeze out maybe a, another one on him. And he kept throwing the ball great. So we we were able to get through, essentially get through that game with those two guys. Um, didn't have to didn't have to use Sheaf or or Ben Jacobs who. Um, you know, in all likelihood, we'll start tomorrow. Um, I'll talk to Sammy about that and make a final decision. But you know, shoot, we were either going to close with him tonight if we had the lead, or or start with him tomorrow. I think so was the plan. But um, to not have to use either of those two guys, that was that was good. So what is that? Uh, Tommy's Tommy's going to be out this weekend. Um, he's got some some shoulder stiffness and tendonitis, um, and so we're going to be without him this week, which is. Obviously, unfortunate. Um, he's a big piece of our rotation, a big piece of our staff. But um, we're going to have to, we're going to have to pick up the slack. So somebody's going to have to step up. And and guys want opportunities. Here you go. Um, so it's it's unfortunate not to have Tommy. But uh, I don't know how long. You know, we'll kind of play that by air and see see how he feels. The good news is, as of right now, it's nothing structural, major. It's just kind of. Uh, Irritated and a little bit pissed off, so we got to calm it down and get ahead of it. And you know, he's a he's a valuable commodity for for the program. So we have to we got to take care of him and make sure he's healthy and ready to come back when he is. So different or similar to Marco's situation when he dealt with the guys? I know you said he made there's no real timetable, but is he going to miss one, two weeks, or is it kind of like uh, Marco? We'll we'll see how it goes. You know, uh, we're. That's one of those things we're not going to put a timetable on it. Obviously, the sooner we can get it back, the better. But we're not going to we're not going to rush it to the point of putting him in jeopardy. It's just not it's not how we do things here. So um, when he's ready, Tommy's probably the, one of the biggest competitors in that clubhouse. When he's ready to go, he'll he'll let us know, and, and his body will let us know if it's still 
irritated, then hey, he needs a little bit longer rest and, and maintenance on it. So as soon as it's ready, he'll, he'll get back to. When did that start? Was that after? Uh, after the last last start up in uh, up in Pullman. I don't know if the 36 degrees and rain had anything to do with that or not, but hey, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it starts stiffening up pretty good after the next day, and and so. Um, you know, it, it's, it happens, you know, one of those things that happens and, and we just got to take care of him and get him healthy and get him back out there. What's the first crooked number we've seen that in some points in a couple of weeks? How do you feel like the offense is kind of its foot again? Um, just, just starting to get back to guys not trying to do too much, just stay within themselves and put together good at bats. And, and I think uh, hitting with more of a plan, I think, instead of just going up and Trying to hit a homer or whatever they were doing prior to, we just weren't we weren't being ourselves. And last, uh, not just because we put up a lot of runs and hits, but the last five or six games, we've started to kind of get back to, I think, what makes us us and better at bats and putting good contact on things. And hopefully that continues because um, uh, it's a fun offense when it gets going. Nick was telling us that he doesn't really generally pay attention to the scouting reports. And he's paid a little bit more attention now. Do you think that? That's kind of a clubhouse thing. Like maybe guys are a little bit more prepared when they're going to the plate. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's something you do about. Is this the first year? Oh, well, uh, it, it's the, <laughs> that's one of those things that I think maybe a little bit of both. They they in the past week or so have we as a staff have made it very clear. Um, that we what we need in the scouter report so they I don't think they had much of a choice but to pay attention if that makes sense so um, yeah I mean the fact that you know some of those guys hey look if you're a good enough hitter and, and can hit hit you don't need us to up here and jabber and all that type of stuff and some guys don't need a lot of information and I, I it's totally fine um, but when you're when you're scuffling you know and, and you continue to scuffle at the things that were saying to stay away from on the scouting report, then I want to pay attention a little bit. So um, it is what it is. You know, some, like I said, I've played with a lot of guys that didn't need scouting reports that they hit to their plan and that was it and good for them. Um, so I'm not saying you have to, but um, if you continue making the same mistakes, then you might want to pay attention. Um, team wide tonight, a lot of opposite field base hits, a lot of um, <coughs> two strike hits. Was that Kind of a, part of that plan tonight, too, uh, or just in general, getting the team back and really like when even counts, finding a way to put a barrel on the baseball inside out. Uh, the two strike, uh, two strike approach has been a, a big emphasis as of late. We just we've been striking out way too much as a team, um, and getting outside of what again makes us a good hitting team. Um, continuing to chase pitches we shouldn't pit, uh, shouldn't chase, and and making a conscious effort of making an adjustment with two strikes. And to me, those are, from a defensive standpoint, those are backbreakers. You know, when you give up two strike hits, it's like, gosh, dang, had that guy dead to rights and we gave up a hit, now he's on base and you keep the line moving. So it's it's an extreme, it's been an emphasis as of, as of late, especially like we, we got to do a better job of doing that. And to their credit, they've responded and, um, and, and made some physical adjustments, mental adjustments and like I said, you keep the line moving, and even if you put the ball in play, good things happen. Um, and you know, Ethan, Men Ethan Mendoza, I think, had three or four hits the opposite way today, just just shooting the hole that's wide open there. So, um, yeah, you keep the line moving, and you, and you set the table for the other guys, which is which is the ideal plan. You talk about this team just needing uh, one guy to to start it off and to uh, set the tone for the rest of the group to be able to rally behind them. With Campos having this recent stretch that he's had of success, um, has he been able to be that? I mean, I don't use him as the example a lot, but um, been able to be that pillar for this uh, recent uh, success on the team? I think he, he's one of the guys. He's not the only guy. Um, I, I think it's just been more of a team focus versus an individual guy. And I think that's where we get in trouble is we, we expect every individual to do it and we can't do it that way. But we're a team on and off the field. We're we got a team identity, a team offense, a, you know, a team game plan. Um, so when we're successful, it's when one through nine are bought into that. And I think you've seen a little bit more of that lately. And kind of buried in the offense was Keith getting the pensions tonight. He's had quite a few pensions lately. Uh, 
Iman was talking about how difficult it is to kind of come in on in a spot cool on the bench. Uh, how is how difficult is that to come off the bench and provide a little spark like that? Um, from experience, it's difficult and it sucks, you know, because you're usually facing a closer or a back end guy that's nasty, and you're you're not into the rhythm of the game, and you're asked to go get something done with the game on the line. And and if anyone knows how difficult it is, I do, because um, I wasn't very good at it. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, you're aggressive when you come off the bench, and and Vu has done better than I don't think anybody could ask for coming off the bench, and and that's a guy that. Again, another guy chomping the bit that should be in the lineup, you know, more. But you know, trying to figure out where to put him and who to take out is, is difficult. But um, they're they're making it tough on me, which is good. Um, but he just continues to be ready for his role, and and that's the ultimate team guy. Um, so he's ready when when his number is called upon, and and he just continues to excel at it. You moved Campbell to the leadoff spot today. Is that just a Williams off day, or is he in your? You said there was a couple of interviews. Um, well, it's it's one of those one of those things to where kind of a snowball effect um, to where you know only nine guys can play, and if I wanted to get Lance in the lineup today, which I, I was adamant about doing, um, somebody's got to come out, and you know just kind of trying to look at where we have a surplus of guys. It's kind of in the outfield, and wanted to keep Compton in there. He's been he's been as of late, you know, hitting. 3.30, I think, against lefties. So it really didn't matter lefty-righty with Compton. I wanted to keep his bat in the lineup. Um, so, you know, yeah, I told Harris, hey, dude, don't hate me. I just, I got I to gotta get Eamon in there today and, and uh, you know, be ready to go in, in case we need you. And he's like, hey, man, whatever it takes to win a game. So <laughs> just another another team guy. So I'm, I'm uh, he handled it great, and he'll, he'll probably be back in there tomorrow. In light of the resiliency your team has shown the last couple of games after a four-game skid, um, uh, what do you credit for that? What has changed? Is there an energy shift, um, mindset shift, you know, things, I guess, indicators that uh, have shown you uh, where it's prompted? Um, you know, I think, I think we as, uh, as, an, as a program and as, as a team were uh, borderline embarrassed, I think, of how we played it in, up in Pullman. I, I don't. We just, that's not the style of play that we want to stamp on this program. Like, we're better than that. And we know that. And we understand that that's not acceptable to, to go out. And, and if you lose a game, it's, it's okay as long as you go about it the right way and represent the right way. We were not representing this program the right way, and in my mind. And, um, you know, we, we talked about it and said, you know, I don't care. There is a way that you have to go about your business and a way, uh, a tenacity that you have to play with, and that represents Arizona State in this program. So if you're not going to do that, we'll find guys that will. And so it, it's it's kind of that time, guys. We're at the crossroads. We can't keep going out and playing with no intensity the way we're playing. And to their credit, they've responded well the last couple of games. But this is, you know, my mind, this is what we're capable of doing. So if you come with the right mentality, right attitude, and and the right approach. At the end of the day, the scoreboard, yeah, it's important, but if, if you go out and, and play the way you're capable of and come up short, I can live with that. That's fine. But um, there's no excuse for not playing hard and, and playing focused and with a mentality and a mindset. So Was it, a, was it all a, a matter of focus when, uh, you know, in some of those games it's very close uh, and you get to a certain point where you like, feel like you can pull those games out, but you don't. Uh, did, and, over time, does that in some ways wear on, on I guess, the focus? Or, you know, um, when you have to regroup in that, in that It shouldn't. I mean, you know, to me, it's you go about your business every day. You know, these guys want to play pro ball one day. Well, try playing 162, you know, versus 56. This is easy. You got three games a week, four games a week. It shouldn't be that tough to focus and, and play with, uh, with a little bit of energy, you know. Um, so to me, yeah, the, the tough losses are, hey, that's that's the nature of the landscape we're in right now. You you you're not going to blow teams out very often. So games are going to be close, and if you you're being taught how to play the game the right way, because the little things matter when you lose one run games. So that's an emphasis of teaching moments and being able to to break things down and say, okay, this is why we lost that game by one run. You know, if you, if you can't execute a pickoff play, then you know, those things add up to runs why we lose by one. And 
So it goes to show you the importance of doing the little things right and emphasizing that in practice and during games. So um, to me, that's you try to take the positives out of it and continue to teach and and allow them to learn the game the right way. Talk about the cost runs. Thank you guys for now. After that, it was lost to Washington State. Knowing that this is the number three team in the Pac-12 standings and then Oregon State around the corner, um, how critical is this current stretch for your guys' this um, later on in the season aspirations? Um, not as critical as just playing the right way. Not so, so much worried about the results, you can't worry about the results. I mean, if we could will ourselves to win, we would be undefeated right now. It doesn't work that way. But you got to go out and focus on winning every pitch, and, and the results take care of themselves. And ultimately, the wins take care of itself when you focus on winning every pitch. You talked about it. The guys kind of talked about it. The uncomfortable conditions up in uh, Pullman. You got another one likely next weekend with Corvallis. Looking back, is there anything that you would have liked to see different in the preparation, or was it kind of just not really a lack of focus? Um, I just think uh, when you look at that, you're, you're going to have to deal with elements. You know, last I checked, the World Series is played in late October and November sometimes. It's not exactly 72 and sunny in some of those cities. So if, if you want to be able to play not only at this level, but the next level, you're going to have to deal with cold and you got to deal with elements and wet baseballs. That's, that's just part of it. And plus the other teams dealing with the same elements we are. So there's no excuse for having the other team be tougher than you. That's just a mindset in my mind. So be ready to play regardless of the elements. Yeah, it's a little cold. Heck, I was cold too. But at the end of the day, you go out and get it done and, and focus on playing winning baseball. And if you're that locked into the game mentally, that usually the external elements don't bother you that much or shouldn't. So, um, to me, that's that's the mindset you have to play with. To put, to put some of these things into big league terms, uh, as you have, do you feel like your players with you know, their aspirations to get to that level have been most receptive to those kind of, uh, I guess, messages? Um, you know, we, we don't talk a whole lot about, you know, pro ball other than you know, just having the consistent mindset on a daily basis and making sure you're doing your routine on a daily basis. And that's really the only time we bleed over into talking about the next level. It's like, hey, you guys want to play at the next level, you got to get into a routine and stay consistent with what you do. You can't do it for two days, get hot, and then shelf it, right? You have to stay on a, a type of a, you know, something that a routine that makes, makes it work for you um, as an individual. So, and then, you know, from us, again, it's the mindset of our team mindset is what we like to try to talk about and preach. So, um, and again, I think the college mindset might be a little bit different than, than the pro mindset to where, I've said it before, we play 56 playoff games here in, in college, whereas pro ball, you're, you got a long, long regular season. We don't have that luxury of having guys work through a lot of problems if we aspire to get to the postseason. We got to win every game. So we're playing winning baseball every day. We're trying to play winning baseball every day. Have you seen the player to player accountability uh, progress in the <coughs> last week or two, um, especially as I think uh, I've covered in these last couple of games? Have you seen more and more guys speak up, uh, try to step into that vocal leadership? It, it, it's gotten it's gotten more improving you know uh we're definitely improving in that front but i think again it's just it's uh goes back to just the mindset on a daily basis you know what we're trying to do focus on doing things the right way and, and yeah i think there there has been some more accountability as of late which is good and we got to keep that going with uh with jack's ryan uh, is, is there any status update on him is he, is he healthy or is there at least the work through uh, some stuff related to the nature um there's not great news on that front. So um, until I get more definitive on that, um, I don't wouldn't feel comfortable going into too much detail. But the early prognosis is not real promising. So.